help me find my way Remember not my sins Just let me hear you say I forgive you I love you You are mine Take my hand Go in peace Sin no more Beloved and brothers, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And during this Mass, we remember Janine Whitehurst, Noma, and Siobhan Arnold. And also, I'd like to ask your prayers for Thomas Daniel Brigden, the young boy, uh, well, this young man, who will be a uh, Baptize, confirm, and will receive communion at the Easter Vigil. We had a little ceremony right last night as part of the scrutinies. We put all the scrutinies together and receive, uh, welcome him into the church community. So please remember him in your prayers. Also, of course, we pray for all the mothers uh, during this Mass. So now to prepare ourselves for this celebration, let us pause for a moment and think of the mercy and goodness of God.
Lord, by water and the Spirit, you give us new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, by the cross, you brought pardon and hope. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, by your death, you brought peace to the sinner. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. So let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for this day. The first reading is a reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have taken the shame of Egypt away from you. The Israelites pitched their camp at Gilgal and kept the Passover there on the fourteenth day of the month, at evening in the plain of Jericho. <coughs> on the morrow of the Passover, they tasted the produce of that country, unleavened bread and roasted ears of corn that same day. From that time, from their first eating of the produce of that country, the manna stopped falling, and having manna no longer, the Israelites fed from that year onwards on what the land of Canaan yielded. This is the word of the Lord. Today we are having a poem about from the women and girls of Afghanistan who face an uncertain future and will need courage, strength, international support and empathy for their suffering. And so we listen to the following prayer psalm. And so we pray this news. God of justice and mercy, hear my cry, hear the wail of my sisters. See our lives in disorder, our dreams of peace and security in the dust. We are cast aside by the powerful. Our strength ebbs with each sigh of despair. Stress is our constant companion. We watch our world crumble and we can only weep. But you, God, can give us strength. You can nourish our souls and revitalize our minds. You can touch us with wisdom, banish sorrow from our brows. You have granted wisdom to women of ages past. You have healed the sick and brought forth life from the old. You have raised up the lowly and felled the powerful. You have been just and sure. With your aid, we waver no more. We stand up in faith and praise, for you are the God of grace, mighty in justice and mercy. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. For anyone who is in Christ, <laughs> There is a new creation. The old creation has gone, and now the new is here. It is all God's work. It was God who reconciled us to himself through Christ, 
and gave us the work of hunting on its reconciliation. In other words, God in Christ was reconciling the world to himself, not holding man's faults against them, and he has entrusted to us the news that they are reconciled. So we are ambassadors for Christ. It is as though God were appearing to us, and the appeal that we make in Christ's, Christ's name is be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made the sinless one into sin, so that in him we may become the goodness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel at the end. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I will leave this place and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The tax collectors and the sinners were all seeking the company of Jesus to hear what he had to say. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained. This man, they said, welcome sinners and eat with them. So he spoke them this parable. A man had two sons. The younger said to the father, Father, let me have the share of the estate that will come to me. So the father divided the property between them. A few days later, the younger son got together everything he had and left for a distant country where he squandered his money on a life of debauchery. When he had spent it all, the country experienced a severe famine, and now he began to feel a pinch. So he hired himself out to one of the local inhabitants, who put him on his farm to feed the pigs. And he would willingly have filled his belly with the husks the, husks the pigs were eating, but no one offered him anything. Then he came to his senses and said, How many of my father's paid servants have more food than they want, and here am I, dying of hunger. I will leave this place and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as one of your paid servants. So he left the place and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with pity. He ran to the boy, clasped him in his arms, and kissed him tenderly. Then his son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father said to one of the servants, Quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the calf we have been fattening and kill it. We are going to have a feast, a celebration, because this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found. And they, begin, they began to celebrate. Now the eldest son was out in the fields, and on his way back, as he drew near to the house, he could hear music and dancing. And calling one of the servants, he asked what it was all about. Your brother has come, replied the servant, and your father has killed the car we had fattened because he has got him back safe and sound. He was angry then and refused to go in, and his father came out to plead with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have slaved for you and never once disobeyed your orders, yet you never offered me so much as a kid for me to celebrate with my friends. But for this son of yours, when he comes back after swallowing up all your property, he and his women, you kill the car we have been fattening. And the father said, My son, you are with me always, and all I have is yours. But it is only right that we should celebrate and rejoice, because your brother here was dead and has come to life. 
he was lost and is found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember when I was about nine years old, I was a tenor St. Aloysius Junior School at the time. It was Christmas time, which also meant the school nativity play time. I was dreading it. Everybody in the class had to have a part. But I was a very quiet, shy boy with a stutter. I didn't want to speak in part. However, I ended up with a part which was perfect for me. I was the front end of the donkey. I had no lines to say, so maybe the teacher knew about my anxiety. Anyway, I was relieved of not having to speak and also relieved that I wasn't the rear end. I could hide behind the donkey costume and no one outside my class would have known it was me. I could play my part without fear. The costume was my mask, if you like. The following week's Catholic pictorial had photographs of my school play, and I was on two of the photos, and I looked closely at them to make sure I couldn't be identified. Only my eyes were visible, so it wasn't possible. You see, wearing a mask or a costume which hides our, ident our identity allows us the freedom to do or say things that we would not normally have done or said. To act or to say something which is not really what we believe in. It belongs to the character we are portraying. We would by definition be a hypocrite. The word hypocrite ultimately comes into the English language from Greek, and the Greek word Hippocrates, which actually means an actor or player, and literally, literally means an interpreter from underneath. This makes more sense when you know that the actors in ancient Greece wore large masks to mark which character they were playing, and so they interpreted the story from underneath their masks. The word took on an extended meaning to refer to any person who was wearing a figurative mask and pretending to be someone or something that they were not. It took a surprisingly long time for hypocrite to gain its more common meaning that we use now, a person who acts in contradiction to his or her state of belief or feelings. In our gospel, we hear the, the parable of the prodigal son. There are three main characters in this story, the father and the two sons. The younger son is bored of life at home and asks for his inheritance now and not waste as traditionally until his father's death. It could be seen, I suppose, that he wished for his father to be dead so that he could have his money. The father was deeply upset. However, he loved his son and if the son really wanted to leave, the father would not get in his way. And so the son leaves, travels far away, and blows his inheritance on women and debauchery. After falling destitute and eating with the pigs, he finally has a change of heart and returns home. Note that the father didn't know when or even if the son would return. However, we read that he sees his son coming from afar. So the father must have been watching out for him all the time, every day. He had not given up on his son. He loved him no matter what he had done. This is unconditional love. The father just didn't welcome the son. He kissed him and clothed him with the best robe, put a ring on his finger, and killed the calf which had been fattened for a celebration. And he put on a feast for his son. The second son, when he heard and saw this, 
he was angry and felt, felt betrayed. For while the first son was enjoying himself, the second son was working hard in the fields for his father. The father had given the first son a fattened calf in celebration, but had never even offered him a kid to celebrate with his friends. The father replied, You are with me always, and all I have is yours. But your brother here is dead, has come to life, he was lost and is found. When Jesus was telling this parable, he was actually answering the criticism of the Pharisees and the scribes who criticised Jesus of welcoming of sinners and even eating with them. So their criticism suggests that they would never welcome or eat with sinners. Jesus wants the Pharisees to identify themselves with one of the characters in the story. So are they, one, the son who went away? No, they would never act like that. Or two, are they like the father who welcomes sinners? No, because they don't do that either. So therefore, there's only one other person left they could be like, the second son, who was faithful and hard working, as the Pharisees were, but was jealous and had no time for his brother. The second son didn't do forgiveness. The Pharisees were hypocrites. They wore a mask of piousness and faithfulness to God, and yet beneath that mask was their two selves. And to be honest, each and every one of us here have traits of all three characters, traits of the father and of the first son and the second son. So if we, if we were to examine our conscience and ask ourselves, who are we like in that story? Are we like the son who sins and abandons the father? Or are we like the father who, who forgives the sins of others? Or are we like the second son who will live good pious lives on the outside but are unforgiving and uncaring on the inside. We do know that God our Father is always looking out for us and is waiting for the time when we come home to him. And on that day we'll be much celebrating. So for us let us look out for our lost brothers and sisters. Welcome them back guide them to the Father and let us not wear a mask and may the face that we show be the face of God. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the compassion in God, let us take our prayers to the Lord. Jesus uses the parable of the prodigal son to show the mercy of God, and that no matter how we have sinned and offended God, God is always welcoming and waiting to forgive us. We pray for all those who've lost their faith, that they may return to the arms 
of their loving God. On this Mother's Day, we pray for all mothers, and particularly those in our parish, that they may experience the love, support, and appreciation of their children. For all expectant mothers, and for all those in childbirth, that they may receive the best in medical care, and that they and their babies may enjoy God's protection from all harm during this most blessed moment. Today's Gospel also reminds us of the importance which Jesus places on forgiveness. We pray for the grace to forgive those who have wronged us and for a spirit of reconciliation among feuding families and neighbours. We pray for the women and girls of Afghanistan who continue to face an uncertain future and need courage, strength, international support and empathy for their suffering. We pray for those living with ill health, with long hospital waiting lists. May they receive the treatment they require to live happier and healthier days ahead. Lord, hear us. May all our dear departed rest in peace especially Anne-Marie Evans, Kath Baden, Ellen Purcell and baby Abigail. Maybe it may all those who remember them find hope and consolation in their faith. We pray also for those whose anniversaries occur around this time, especially those mentioned in our newsletter. Eternal rest. Grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Let us pray for a few moments in the silence of our hearts. Let us ask Mary, the mother of our Saviour, to pray with us as we say together. Hail Mary, Mary full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in this night, and we are happy to Please be seated, and we have the opportunity. Thank you. 
my sister and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you in joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the relieving and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, you are indeed the holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the new fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Malcolm our Bishop, and all the ministers of your Gospel. Remember Anne Evans, Ken Padden, and Elena, Ellen Purcell, and our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be Koya to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. As we say the Lord's Prayer, we remember Janine, Noma, and Shivon Arnold, and also pray for all the mothers, and also mothers-to-be. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. My sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Pray the spiritual communion prayer for those who are joining us via the live stream. Jesus, my Lord and brother, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I decide to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come now spiritually into my heart. I welcome you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We will sing him number 280 in the 200.
O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. So it's the Mother's Day. Uh, can I ask all the mothers and all those who have a mother's instinct, all the ladies and children, if you all could stand with them, because there are many people who care for children, your grandchildren or neighbor's children, and if you could stand, please, so that we could celebrate who you are on this Mother's Day. And you look up your niece and nephew, so nieces, granddaughter, grandson. And the sisters, can you stand please? The nuns, yeah. You will work with a lot of children, yeah, that's right. Very good, yeah. Good. Can I ask the children to come forward, please? And Dick and Michael will give a daffodils to you after the prayers. All the children, if you could come forward. Yeah, just a minute, yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Okay. Normally we ask you to give a kiss to the mothers, but COVID, don't, don't get too close, okay? So we are going to say these prayers now, and your response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our mothers who have given us life and love, that we may show them reverence and love. We pray to the Lord. For mothers who have lost a child to death, that their faith may give them hope, and their family and friends support and console them. We pray to the Lord. For mothers who have died, that God may bring them into the joy of his kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, as the mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women, that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers, that the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with the spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. And may the Lord bless you all, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, until you receive a daffodil, please don't sit down so that children know who is waiting for the daffodils and they are going to play this piece of music. You can take a bundle of daffodils and give each one one, okay?
So let us give all the men give a big round of applause to all the mothers. Thank you. And thanks, children. Uh, just a few announcements before we listen to Sister Mary Rose. Um, I'll be quick. Uh, first, anybody celebrating birthday today or in the coming week? Nobody. Right. Okay. If you are hiding and shy, we wish you a happy birthday. And um, the envelope boxes are available. And um, if you have, we normally collect box, please check the back of the church there. And uh, I want to thank Dominic Smith. Dominic is going to deliver the others if they are not here today because they need to be used uh, from next week. Uh, we were thinking of going around and delivering them and saying thanks, but I'm sure Dominic will do that on behalf of all of us. And, but I want to thank you for your generosity and supporting the parish as we go forward. And also, the, there are two boxes of Easter cards with the Easter schedule and a few other information and what we do in the parish. I would really appreciate if you could uh, check the list of the streets and uh, take a pack of cards and deliver them to your neighborhood and so that we know that everybody is covered and um, every street is covered. And especially, I would appreciate those who are living between Highton Hay Road and Liverpool Road, if you could take a few cards, please, to look out, cover uh, area of Bluebell and that state. And there will be stations of the cross on Friday at 6.30, and the uh, retreat, uh, Lenten retreat will continue on Thursdays at 7 o'clock in the old schoolhouse, and there will be benediction today at uh, 4 o'clock. And just a thing about the Kaj, I know there are people making a lot of comments about Kaj, um, you know, supporting and all that. It's also good, I think, to think about joining the Kaj group and to um, see what you can do, you know, and uh, just not just making social good, good comments, but just to be with the group and see what we can do. The way ahead of time, I want to let you know the next meeting will be on the 16th of May. I hope I covered everything. So now we are going to listen to a very important message. Don't run away. And uh, Sister Mary Rose will explain everything. Thank you. You know how it says in the scriptures with Mary and Martha that Mary has chosen the better part? Well, I think this is the worst part. <laughs> um, Christine mentioned last Sunday that we'd be giving out information this week about the future of our new church. As you know, we've had fundraising consultants as advised by the diocese, and they're putting together now a feasibility report for the new church. This will cover the need for a new church due to this one not being fit for purpose, the actual building. It will also highlight the need in the area. Um, as you know, we met as a steering group with about 19 different charities working in the area to see what are the gaps, what are the needs of, of the people in this area. You had already done that for us through the community consultation, but this was the next part of it. So it will highlight the needs in the area. Um, so that we can not just build a church, but build a resource for people in the area. The other thing that we have to try and do is indicate how we're likely to be able to fundraise through a variety of means. So there's the sale of the land and property, that's some of the land in around St Aidan's and here, um, and it should cover between 40 and 60% of the funds needed. <clears throat> but we do need to explore other options for the remaining amount. We're all aware that this is a large sum of money to raise and we recognize that we can't do it through normal fundraising events. They will help, but, but they won't be the answer. 
We're also aware of the financial climate just now for people. And people are facing increasing outgoings like never before, and earnings are either static or not there, um, or people are worse off. Now today, we're not asking for any money. But what we are asking is that people look at pledging for the future. We're also asking that nobody commits to anything that they can't afford. We're, so what we would ask you to do is to take away a leaflet this week. This is the leaflet and they're at the back of the church, which gives you the information about pledging and an envelope. It highlights ways that you could make a contribution to the fund. <coughs> Excuse me. By pledging over a period of time, this is often the best way of contributing because it spreads the contribution over a number of years. Or with a single gift, a lump sum payment, and obviously gift aiding helps that too. But there are other options in this leaflet. We would really appreciate you giving this your time, your thoughts, and your prayers. When I was thinking about this this morning, um, I grew up in a mining community, and I always remember my father saying um, when they had to build a new church, and I was a child in the new church, and I remember him saying, never forget that this was built on the sacrifices of people who had very little money. And that really struck me. And I often think, I don't often go there now because I'm, my family no longer live in that area. But when I do go into that church, I think most people have no idea of what was asked for in order for this to happen. And that will be the case here. You know, what we, what we create, what we found, will be a build that, that future communities can build on. Um, so we appreciate you giving this your time, your thoughts, and your prayers. As Christine said last week, you might have questions. And available at the back of the church after Mass will be Mike Whelan, Lee Pimblett, and Dominic Smith, who will answer your questions if you have questions. However, please put your name down on the yellow sheet at the back of the church and tick if you would like someone to come to chat with you to just explain things further or tick the other column if you feel you can work through the form yourself without being contacted. So as I say, there's a few people at the back of the church who will ask, answer any questions. Um, we will not discuss or ask for any details of your personal finances, nor will we ask for money now, so please don't put money in the envelope. What we're asking you to do is think realistically about what you would be able to commit to when the time comes to beginning the fundraising. And that just gives us the information for the Archdiocese so they can see what the commitment of the parish is. We're all invited to give generously, but no one is asked to give more than they can afford, and every gift is valued. So we're asking you to write your pledge by Sunday the 8th of May, but if you're ready to do it before then, please put the envelope, including, included with your leaflet, that's this envelope I held up, So please put your pledge in this envelope and put it in the box at the back of the church or it can be given directly into the parish office in Adswood Road. And remember, every pledge will be dealt with in the strictest of confidence. So thank you and let's see how we can go forward together. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Please stand. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing life, those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those who those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thank you very much. Please don't forget there's a tea club at the back of the church. Stay around and meet other people. Thank you and be safe. Have a good day. Thank you.